and today we will be discussing about cats in Scala. So I am Prabhat Kashyap, Senior Software Consultant at Nordis. So let's start with the agenda first. So agenda for the today will be a short introduction. What is type classes, monoids and semigroups, functors, monad and monad transformations. So, and we'll end with a quick demo. So let's start with the introduction. So according to the documentation, CATS is a library which provides abstraction for function programming in the Scala programming language. The name is playful short name of word category. So CATS contain a wide variety of functional programming tools. The majority of these tools are delivered in the form of type classes. So let's discuss what are type classes. So type classes are introduced in Haskell. So there are three important components to the type classes. First is the type class itself, then instance, and then there are interfaces. Okay, so let's start with uh, explanation of each one of them. So the type classes itself, so type classes were first introduced in SQL as discussed earlier as a new approach to ad hoc polymorphism. And then the type classes in the Haskell are based on Hindley Milner type system. And in Scala, this is a bit different than what we had in Haskell. So basically in Scala, we have a local type inference uh, and one of the major difference in the type systems is that Scala allows subtyping uh, where Haskell does not provide subtyping. So here at the bottom you can see a code snippet uh, which is actually our types class. So here we have defined a number like trait which is of type A and we have declared four different methods, add, subtract, subtract, multiply, and divide. And we enclosed them in a singleton object, which we will be using on the later components. So, yep, that is our type class. So what it looks like in Scala. So now let's move on to the diff next uh, component that is type class instance. So type class instance of type class provide the implementation of for the type. So we have now a trait and the implementation of the, the, those methods are called instances. So usually the member of type classes are in enclosed within a singleton object and most all of these implementation are implicit by default. So let's look one example of type class instance so you you remember the previous code right so we have a trait which is our type class number like and at the bottom of our screen we have the implementation which is instance uh, I have created an instance which is int like and which defines all the methods that were abstract in our type class. So these are all the implementation and now move on to the third part of our type classes that are interfaces. So interfaces are basically functionalities that we expose to user, users. So uh, we have our type classes uh, and we have the implementations. So now let me create an object that is do the math. And here I import my type class. And then I define a method which is addition and I'm only using a add method from my type class just for an example. So here I have addition which takes two parameters and one implicit variable as well which is number like 
uh, which is our type class of type A. And then I'm just calling that add method of my type class. And at the last line, you can see I'm calling the addition, which is the method that I have just created and which will automatically inverse the type and will give the result as three. Since I have only implemented uh, for integer type, uh, it will only work for the integer type. Uh, if, uh, like, supposedly I have uh, given the double as argument, so it will give me compilation error for implicit not defined. Otherwise, I have an option uh, where I can specifically tell the uh, compiler that it will give the implement uh, implicit not provided error by the annotations so this is what we have the in uh, this is what we have as a type class in scala so let's move on to the uh, part where we have implemented uh, type classes in cats so cats is written using a modular structure it it allows us to choose which type classes instance and interface method we want to use so now uh, we have, again, we will be taking all the mod components that we have discussed earlier, like type classes, instance, and interfaces. So here I'm taking an example of show type class, which is basically converts my data type into a string. So how it is different from two string is it is type safe because two string method will convert any object to a string, but this will show the compilation error uh, if I am trying to uh, convert a string uh, for double value when I have declared for integer only. So if you look onto the course in it at the topest import, the cats.show is my type class. So this is where I import my type class using cats and then the instance of integer type. So I have only used integer here. Uh, so I am only importing the integer instances. So you can relate that the top line to the type class and the second line to the instances. Then again comes to the next two line where I am actually uh, performing some operation. We are converting the string integer to a string. So one will be one that is integer will convert it to a string. Now, uh, the second last line in which import cat syntax dot show is the interfaces that defined by cats itself. So cats, or cats give all the interfaces uh, in the syntax package. So if you look onto the last line, that is one two three dot show. So one two three is my integer, and dot show is like calling any other uh, method. So it will convert my integer to a string. So that is uh, one type class in cats. And there is also uh, the EQ, EQ type class, which is again more type safe than double equals to. But uh, uh, since we have a lot to discuss, uh, we, I choose to leave it. So now let's uh, uh, discuss about how to define custom instances. So now we know we have uh, type classes uh, inside the cats. But what if, if I want to create some? So here is one example where I am actually creating one instance. So here I have a date which I am converting it into a string. So uh, first line is self-explanatory. Then second line implicit well date show which is uh, extending the show type class so show type class is for integer double and other data types that is, that are predefined for cats but it is not defined for date so here i am extending it for date and at the date show dot show new date will automatically get the object of date and prints the result something like at uh, the millisecond since the epoch uh, as you can see at the bottom of your screen. 
so this is the result of whatever i have defined on the above example so by that way we can create the custom instances and then there are multiple type classes uh, more powerful type classes in mono uh, cats like monoids monads punctors and semigroups so we will discuss each one of them one by one and see what uh, the what is the use of each one of them so yeah uh, let's start with monoids first so monoid is a type class which allow us to add or combine a value so if we go by the definition a monoid for a type a is an operation on combine with type a uh, and an element empty of type a so if you look at the bottom there is a type class again uh, which which contains two different method uh, combine and empty so empty will gives us the empty value for string we will get the empty string and for the integer we will get the zero and again for to be monoids uh, one must follow these two rules one is associative law and one is identity law so let's see few examples uh, of monoids so monoid integers addition integer multiplication and string concatenation are few one of the few examples of monoids so how uh, these are monoids let's go one one by one to each one of them so if you look into the first box we have 1 plus 1 which is equal to 2 so this is the combine uh, and uh, for the second line 1 plus 0 is equal to 1 and 0 plus 1 is equal to 1 uh, shows us the identity law and again for the integer we have 0 as the empty uh, empty data type so and the third and the fourth line in which 1 plus 1 plus 2 which give a, gives us 4 and 1 plus 1 plus 2 which again give, gives us 4 uh, again it follows the associative law same goes with the string concatenation and integer multiplication but with with the subtraction subtraction integer uh, it is not monoid because it does not follow the associative law why you can see the example 4 minus 2 minus 2 if we close uh, 4 minus 2 in the parenthesis then it will give us 0 otherwise it will give us 4 when we switch the parenthesis to 4 minus 2 to 2 minus 2 so therefore it is not monoid so this is the example of monoid so and semigroups we have semigroups now another type class in cats uh, so a semigroup is just a combined part of a monoid uh, so for example we have non empty list and positive integer so as we discussed earlier we have non we have a empty uh, empty data type for monoids but in case of non empty list we can't have a empty list in case of semigroup same goes with positive integers uh, so to be monoid it should yield for empty as a zero but since in semigroup we don't have zero uh, that is empty method so positive integers will lies into semigroup but not in monoids so if you see the type class for semigroups uh, there is a method combine uh, which is again uh, combines two values uh, in the case of integer it will add otherwise it will uh, basically concatenate in the case of string and then there is one trait again that is monoid which we have discussed in the earlier slide uh, which extend the semigroup so this is how we do things in cats also so monoid which contains an empty method extend semigroups which contains combined method so in the monoid we have both combine and empty but in the case of semigroup we have only combined so this way we have created we can create semigroup as well as monoid so now this one is for scala again scala standard library now let's look how cats have implemented monoids so 
like we will go in the same fashion uh, which we are following the type class instance and interfaces which is syntax so type classes so the monoid type classes is cats kernel monoids which is aliased as cats dot monoid so and similar goes with the uh, semi groups as well so semi groups we have uh, aliased as cats dot semi group but it actually resides inside uh, cats dot kernel dot semi group and then we have instances so if you look into the code that is on the bottom of the screen uh, the first line which imports is a type class so here we are importing the monoid type class and then we are uh, basically getting importing the string instance and at the last line we are combining two string value which will give the result as hello world so this is the type class and the instance now let's look into the syntax which is basically a pipe plus pipe pipe operator that cats provide so uh, in the example if you look import cat syntax semi group it will uh, basically for pipe plus pipe which will which we call the combine operator so at the last line of the example if you look uh, uh, where result option 1 and pipe plus pipe which is combine operator again and monoid option of int dot empty so option of 1 uh, is again option of 1 if you are familiar with scala it's an optional value and monoid option in dot empty will give give us a none so when we combine both of them it will give option of one so it is some something like one plus zero which which is equal to a one and if we have like added uh, option of one with option of two so the result uh, which it give is equal to option of three so that is uh, monoids and semi groups in cats now let's move on to the functor which is again the another type class uh, so a functor is anything with a map method and for example there is option list and either uh, so we all have used map right so map is basically used for transforming the value that is inside not just for traversing the list or say list for example if we have option of one dot map and then we want to add something into that uh, that add with that value so it will give us the result as option of two uh, so here we have transformed the value that is inside our functor so this is what is functor uh, are used for and then uh, there are functors in scala as well again uh, uh, we have functors uh, type class which uh, we can get by importing cats dot functor and then functor uh, to create an option we can create a functor or option and then dot map is again the method uh, that is map uh, and here i'm creating option of one and then adding it by two so this is my type class and for instance we have again we have created an instance of option here and scala provides a lift function for functors so if you can see the second example third line we have option increment function in which i created a, a functor uh, with option and with a method dot lift so here it will create a method uh, which will take uh, integer as an argument and add it by one and yields the result as option. So if we have uh, given like well of result uh, option of increment option of two, it, it will give us the result as option of three. So let's move on to the syntax. So syntax is pretty much easy. So the functor type class have the syntax with cats dot syntax dot functor and uh, i haven't include any example because uh, the main use of uh, the functor is with dot map and we have already seen the few example of map with functors so now let's come on to the most interesting and uh, uh, most heard topic 
n type class which is monads so uh, this is obviously one of the most common abstraction in scala and we all must have heard about this so while working with scala we have may encountered it and monad is anything with a constructor and a flat map so it it contains a flat map so all functors are monad by the way and then there is a statement written over here uh, which states a monad is a mechanism for sequence computation basically in simpler terms uh, it is used for transforming the values so if uh, we go by the definition that we have given in functors it is quite same so isn't the functors are same as monoids but it's kind of same but not exactly same so in the case of uh, uh, functors the functors are limited in the way that they are allowed to transform value once only because they have map uh, but in the case of monads flat map methods allow to specify what happens next using flat map and also we have a special uh, syntax support for monad that is for comprehension so everyone of us that are that working in scala have used for comprehension so that is the syntactical sugar for, for flat map as well as map so monads are the reason why we can use this so let's move on to the definition of uh, monads so monads contain two different methods one is pure and one is flat map so flat map that we have already discussed and the pure uh, method is provide a way to create a new monadic con context from a plain value and again the uh, flat map is the one that we have already discussed so now let's look into the monads in cats uh, so type class we have uh, again monad type class and we can create a monadic a simple integer into monadic and context by using uh, importing the type class and then using the pure method an instance we are again using the same uh, cats dot instant option and then using the flat map on that value so basically it if i give the value option of 3 and try to add 2 it will use the result as sum of 5 which is option of 5 and now let's move on to the syntax so uh, in cats uh, there are three different syntax for uh, monads there is flat map there is functor for map obviously and then there are applicative for pure so by combining all three of them creates a monad for us now let's quickly move on to the monad transformation so monad transformation in standard scala library is a difficult and messy because uh, as you can see in the example there is nested for comprehension so if i have a list of user which contains option of users list of options of user and get option of user then in the yield again uh, i want to get the name out of that user i have to again uh, get inside that uh, option and transform it accordingly so this is why uh, the standard scala libraries monad transformation are bit uh, messy so let's uh, see the cat transform transformers so cat provides transformers for many monads uh, each named with a t suffix so either t composes either with other monads uh, option t composes option uh, so and so on so as you can see uh, there are number of uh, transformers and each monad transformation is a data type defined in a cats dot data package so all of these are my uh, different cats transformers so now that is like uh, we have understood what are functor semi groups uh, uh, monads monad transformers what are the problems with standard scala library uh, with monad transformation and what can we do with cats transformers so let's look a quick demo uh, let me share my screen with you guys so as you can see uh, there there is uh, object which is again a singleton object which extends app so i i hope you know this uh, syntax 
so here i am parsing double uh, from a string uh, so this example is taken from the cat documentation itself so if you want to go deep inside this example you can visit that website as well so here i am using a try uh, which converts into a double otherwise uh, it will give the error so in short i am creating a either either it will be a error string or it will be an actual value which is double and again i am hoping that uh, uh, you know about either just for a brief uh, either contains two value one is error value other one is uh, actual value which is desired value so in on the left side we conventionally put the error value and on the right the actual value and then we are dividing uh in here you can see we are dividing and either dot condition we can see uh, b is not equal to zero again the denominator cannot be zero so it can yield the uh, error and then we are using the transformer here so if i uh, run this piece of code it will yield me the result because a is not uh, parsable as double and this become quite messy when we try to use async uh, with the normal code so the parse double is here again the divide is here again but now i am using a uh, parse double async which i am wrapping it inside the future and then there is divide async which is basically dividing the value of a and b and then uh, i want to uh, transform these monads accordingly so first i am as you can see in this line of code uh, i am parse the double async value so i am inputting the value then again giving one one other value and then the transformation is happening here so this the, here i am using two flat maps uh, this is okay for two values but become quite messy when the number of uh, uh, I, transformers uh, increases so how we can solve that in uh, cats uh, is by using the either t transformer so which is a data type for cats so as you can see the the code is quite similar till here right so we have a parsable divide parsable async and divide async now uh, i have created uh, again a transformer here which uh, which have for yield uh, like the first example again and then inputting two string which will yield the result uh, in future either t actually now i have uh, wrap my this value so basically this value is equal to future of either of string so i will wrap that into either t and it will automatically gives me the result value which will be in double same goes with uh, the next value which will i pass and get the value out of it so it will turn do the uh, transformation inside itself and then at the end i am getting the result again divide async will give the result in future of either and i am getting the result out of it which is double again and yielding the result so if i run this program so let me try to run this program uh, so it will give me 0.5 okay so this is asynchronous uh, so i have to wrap this up in so uh, i haven't printing this one so let me try to print this one again uh, this might be let me try to run this again Yes, so this is future dot uh, uh, future is not um, completed and let me try to so okay so this is this will basically blocks my uh, blocks the result and uh, uh, yeah so i remember 
value. Yeah, now this will run. Yeah, so it will give me the right value with the result. So that's uh, uh, it with the, the demo. Now let's quickly move on to uh, the slides. And uh, this was the reference Scala with cats. And try to read this. This is freely available on underscore.io, which gives me a quite good reference for uh, this webinar. And for any feedback and queries, please email me at prabhat.kashyap at So thank you guys. Thank you for attending this webinar.